Howdy folks, welcome back to another episode of Super Hamster Plays Kingdom Death. As ever, do me a favour, hit the thumbs up button on this video, and if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe as well, which you can do by clicking on the little hamster logo down here. Just, 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 just there. Just, just go, click, click, it's fine. So here we are, Kingdom Death. We're building the hand, not to be confused with the hand of the king, that's very Game of Thrones, this is not Game of Thrones, this is Kingdom Death, this is far more brutal, more people will die, and generally unpleasant for everyone, and there's probably more nudity as well. And this one's a bit fiddly. It should be simple, but it's a bit fiddly. And um, here's why, or one of the many reasons, right? You have two legs, and they look basically symmetrical. They look basically identical in every way. But if you stand them up next to each other, one of them is about half a millimetre longer than the other. And you can't really see it here, but perhaps if I do that... That one is a... it's a, the tiniest of fractions taller. But it is. And that, as you look at the model, is the one on the left. Because if you look at there, that leg is a tiny bit longer than that one. So if you get it round the wrong way, he's going to be standing like that on the base. He's going to be stuck on his base like that and leaning at an angle. And you want to keep him nice and straight. So that's reason number one why this is awkward. Reason number two, this piece goes on there. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of up and down. It doesn't really slot into place. When you get it in the right place, there are gaps. So it's it's not always clear where that one should be. When you come to sticking the fur collar on the top, there's a gap underneath it. It doesn't quite, it doesn't stick the way it should. So that's a bit of a pig. And the final part is you have these two shoulder, um, I think pauldrons, shoulder pads, basically. I think pauldrons is the right word, um, which are, again, almost identical, but they're slightly asymmetrical. One, uh, can you see on this one? Yeah, let's square that one up. This side here is slightly straighter than this side here. So they're actually sort of that shape and then rounded, obviously. But that side's almost flat and that side's at about a 30 degree angle. And I'm not actually sure which way around they go. So we're going to build the rest of the model and put those on last. Right, as ever, we're going to start with the feet. Except this time we're not. We're going to start with the collar and the head. The head has a tiny little face in the middle of his forehead. And on the back, it's got quite a smooth bit because this piece clips on the back. So you should be able to work out which is the front. And if you look at the fur trim, in a very rough shape, it's triangular. And the back is the flat edge. So we're going to stick that head into that socket, which I don't know if you can see, but yeah, there, there is a slight socket, which is slightly pointier to the front. So that's where we're going to stick him. And the reason I'm doing that first is that fur trim, I think is going to be quite a pig to get in the right place. And it's such a small part. There's not actually anything to hold on to. So by sticking the head on first, when we come to doing it, we can hold the head, not the fur trim, and we can see what we're doing. Now, of course, while we're here, we may as well stick the crown on the back. As you can see, this crown-shaped piece is a U-shape. The open part is the front, so it 
it goes alongside that tiny little face. So just dab the cement into the groove. And I'm not even going to bother with any on there just yet. Um, you can just push it in and it will just snap into place. I don't know if you heard it, but it does literally snap. And that is now in the right place. So there's his head. And just to really seal it off, let's put a tiny bit of contact cement. It's not contact cement. Why am I calling it contact? It's polystyrene cement, isn't it? So we'll put some polystyrene cement in there. And then we will set that aside and use it when we come back to it later. So there we go. So we've got his head bit assembled. Next part, I'm going to take this one and this piece, which is his hand, believe it or not. It's the hand of the hand. And I'm thinking, because again, this is quite a fiddly bit to get into, that I'm going to stick it on first, but I'm not actually sure if that's where it goes. Because there's a couple of little creases here and here. So I think we might just have to try and figure that out afterwards. Right, back to the fiddly part number two. Where exactly does this go? You have these ribs that you can see on this part of the model, the rib cage. If you turn it, look at the side, there is a smooth bit here and then there's another ridge. And on here, where his shoulders are, you have these two flat sections. And these flat sections should line up with the flat sections here. But it's not a great fit. So you're going to have to hold it in place, at least initially, whilst the cement goes off. So again, I'm not exactly sure where the contact points are. So you need to be a little more generous than normal. Make sure everything's still coated when you get there. Turn them over. Smear it all over the back, which is contoured. So I'm hoping it's actually going to sit quite nicely. But it's getting that in original placement and then getting it all in the right place. There you go. I kind of felt it click. When I was doing it dry, it still moved around a bit, but now it's got that grip. It's sort of everything's slotted into place. So it's slightly, his cape is slightly crooked, but I'm pretty sure that that's correct. It's like he's sweeping, yeah, see there he's sweeping it back because that's where his sword's going to go. So it would naturally hang down here, but he's pushed it back by his sword, which is going to go there. So next up, feet. And because I'm right-handed, I'm going to start with the one on the left, so I can manoeuvre there, and then I'll come around and manoeuvre that way. So as I said before, they just sort of fit at the front. Again, these are kind of woolly. There's not really a socket on this one. It's just flat on the top and flat here. So, and it's even a bit of curvature. So we're just going to have to sort of wing it, get it roughly in the right place, then bring the other one on, get that roughly in the line place. And because we're using polystyrene cement, we'll have a bit of time to wiggle them around and get a, a fit we're comfortable with. So I don't recommend using super glue, which as I've probably said on all of these models, actually, I don't recommend using super glue. They are hard plastic. So use the glue that's designed for that. That's roughly in the right place. And then we'll get the other one. There are some pictures online show where these guys go a bit better so 
have a look at those. But yeah, as you can see, his, his feet are slightly staggered. But actually, that's about right. So there we have that one. Right, so his hand. Work out. Can't quite make his fingers out there behind something. So let's see if we can work out where that goes. Something like that. He's kind of got his hand on his hip. But there's on one side of that, which I'm guessing would be his forearm. There's like a little mini rib cage, and that's almost pointed. If you turn him to sort of that angle, that's pointed out, so it goes sort of in there. So we should be able to get that in now. Definitely think it was the right call to build the rest of him first. I'm not going to be able to put too much on here. I'll have to do it afterwards. Something like that. That's, that's a little high for my liking. Bring it down a bit. No, that seems to be the angle it's supposed to be. So, yeah. So it doesn't. There is actually a gap between his cloak and his hand. The hand of the hand. That one, doing that way. Yeah, it's not too bad that way. And then his sword just goes on that side in such a way that the scabbard slots into that corner of his cloak. There, you can just about see. in there, that corner there, so let's do that as well, as we've got him here and all, as it's going to meet that cloak, we'll put a little bit down there, there is a slight indentation on his trousers, or his pantaloons, I'm guessing that's going to take sort of his fingers or something. It does indeed. His knuckles fit into that gap. So, there is the body of the hand. Again, I might do something with his base, as we did for um, the Kingsman. But yeah, uh, I'm going to leave this guy to set a little bit. And when he's all done, we'll come back and work out how the head's going to go on. As you can see, it fits in like there, but there is a definite gap. And then we've got to fit these things on somehow. But I, as I said earlier, I'm not sure whether they go that way or that way. So again, we'll have to wait until he's, uh, he's set, and then we'll fiddle around with him a bit. So we'll bring you back soon. Right. I've had a bit of a play around. Now he's uh, the cement's gone off a bit. I think I've worked out which way around these shoulder pauldrons go. If you look at him from the top... I'll hold him like that so you get a better view. Yeah. His shoulder across his back and out to his chest guard, kind of make a triangle. And he's definitely pointier in the front. It's quite flat in the back, and yeah, pointier at the front. If you put the two shoulders together, it's not as clear, but flatter in the back, pointier, slightly in the front. It's almost, that silhouette there actually is almost heart-shaped, which means that one sits in there, and that one will sit there. It's it's really difficult for me to describe, even the, the top and the bottom of these, 
excuse me, the top and the bottom of these things, there's slight detail and ridges and things on the top, but it is very, very faint. It's they're, they're meant to be smooth. Um, so I'm not a hundred percent on that, but that's what I'm going with. Give me a second. I'm just going to reach over and grab that one. You can tell the top from the bottom if you look at it from the side. Um, it's almost like there's there's a little face in the shoulder pads that's at the top, and there's this sort of rib cage type thing again, which is along the bottom. So that's a little bit easier to tell. Uh, on the one over his sword arm, so that's his left, your right as you're looking at it. On the back there's a tiniest of tiny and the front actually the tiniest of, of overhangs from where this mustache rib smile whatever it is is going to sit on top of it's going to sit on either side of the arm like that but i i don't know how easily these are going to fit i have played around with dry fitting and so forth but there is no sort of snap moment where everything lines up and clicks into place so I think it's just going to be a bit of jiggery pokery until we decide we're happy with it. That said, now that they're sticking they've slotted right into place and yeah, I'm fairly happy with that. Move it forward just a touch. And yeah, I think that's about right. And then we'll do the same on the other side. Again, you've got the slight overhang of the moustache slash rib slash smile yeah these definitely seem to fit that way so i'm fairly certain we've got those right they're sort of swept back because he's extremely proud of himself so his ego is uh, thrusting his chest forward and that just seems to fit push that down tiny bit Um, and that should it does just sit over the top. I do when I was dry fitting this. If you look at the underside of his cloak, it's pretty ruffled and there's no real socket per se. But on the back edge, there are two very minor re recesses, and they seem to line up with with the ridge on his cloak. But yeah, it's very, very minor. So I think we're going to be relying on the melted glue or the melted plastic caused by the cement on this one to sort of fill recesses and things. And I may even go so far as to a little bit of liquid green stuff before I undercoat him. But yeah, just being a, a generous coat everywhere. I'm still not sure if I'm going to mount him on a base. Or not. But yeah, that is he. everything together to try and hide some of the gaps. Yeah, and that is he. He looks very much like um, Mimbari from Babylon 5, which suspect a lot of you aren't old enough to know what I'm talking about, but some of you will be young enough 
No. Yeah, a lot of you will be young enough that you won't have a clue what I'm on about. And a few of the older watchers are going, Ah, oh, I'm embarrassed. Ah, you see. My wife does a much better Londo impression than I do. Yeah, just going over that to seal in some of the, the group, the exposed edges. Don't think he's going to need any green stuffing. But yeah, that's him. And I may or may not mount him in the middle of his base. It's fairly central. But I can't decide if I want him stood on something just to give him a bit of height. And you compare, he's, he's not significantly taller than a normal hunter, you know, a normal survivor, which seems a bit weird for him to take up four spaces and a hunter figure or a survivor figure of the same size, same stature, only takes up one. So maybe I'll put him on a small rock or a pedestal or something. But I'll do that off camera. Or not, I might bring you back for that one. Who can tell? So I'm going to sign out now, but stick around after I've signed out, just in case I come back and give you a quick tutorial on how to mount him on a bit of a stone platform. And uh, yeah, that'll do with that one. The more I think about it, the more I think I am going to do that. But either way, hit the thumbs up button on this video and don't forget to subscribe by pointing to the clicking on the little hamster down here or just off the bottom of the screen should be a subscribe button. Hopefully you found this one helpful with some of the intricacies of which way round bits and pieces go, whether they're on that side or that side and so forth. But yeah, hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to support the channel if you do. And I'll see you more, or I'll see you in the future for more Kingdom Death, more miniatures, and more video games. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Ha-ha! <laughs> I'm not gone. I am back. I have decided that uh, the hand does in fact need a little bit of a boost, a little bit of a, make him a bit more of a centerpiece. And I'm gonna do that by having him standing on a small platform, a small rock, just to bring him from that thing to about, yeah, so from that height to about there. Just to bulk out the base a bit. He's just, he's quite small. There's not a lot going on on the base, so easiest way I find of doing rocks like this is to take a thick, um, it's about eight mil thick cork tile, sort of thing you'd glue to a wall to turn into a notice board, um, and and just sort of pick at it until you get it into a roughly sort of rock shape. And I've got several sheets of that lying around. And I'll be blowed if I can't find any of them. But what I do have to hand is a roll of this stuff, which is much, much thinner and is used for making um, sort of lining lamps and vases and coasters and that sort of thing. And I bought this off of eBay for a couple of quid for me to roll of the stuff. And I've torn out a whole bunch of random-ish shapes, just pulled off little bits and figure, yeah, that'll do. That's one, that'll do. Next one, similar sort of thing. And I'm just gonna stick a whole bunch of them down in roughly the sort of shape and size that I'm thinking of doing. Yeah, it's the sort of height I'm looking for. Bring that nearer the front into the middle. And I'm just going to put a blob of super glue in the middle of each one and stick them together as a pancake. So I'm not worried about sticking them all together at this point. 
I just want blob in the center just to keep them all lined up. Stick that one down. All blob in the center. That one down. Small blob in the center. Stick that one down. Now we'll go one more. That's the original plan. Blob in the center. Stick that down. Now, as you can see, they don't line up. They overlap in places. I can still fan them out. I'll give that a few seconds. And then I'm just going to start picking bits off that I don't like. Scraping like that using the edge of my nail. This makes an absolute mess. Just one sign. Put the hand in his face that way. Put the lid back on the super glue because it might get covered in bits of chalk. Chalk? Cork. And yeah, just going to pick at it, rounding the edges off. Maybe get in there with one of my files and round them off a bit. Perhaps file a groove into it or something. Break it up. You keep it pinched when you're doing it, because I say that bit can fan out, then it should break off in sort of smoother lumps and you stop getting that layer effect. And you're still going to get some of it, but that's fine because it happens in rock, you know, sleep and things. You also get little flat bits and that will work quite nicely for putting a tiny bit of vegetation on or something. Like this little tuft of grass that's found an edge or you know, just somewhere it can get a root system down. As the front, I figure he's, he's going to be sort of looking for a platform to stand on in order to address. So that will give me that sort of a look. Tiny bit more up there just to round it out. it up a bit when I come to the painting stage so it's not the end of the world yeah now I've got a, a bit of a rock for him to stand on a bit of broken ground a bit of contour a bit of height that will work quite nicely and when he's going to be standing he's going to be standing 
fairly centrally on the base, I think. Let's put him from the top. Yeah, I want him fairly central on the base, so uh, we're going to need that piece to be fairly central. On the base. So now we come back and uh, we can be a bit more generous with the first layer. Perhaps not that generous because I've just super glued my finger to the base. But again, I just need to make sure that I get the, that platform area in the center. Stick everything to myself. Get okay, ready to stick that to the table. So even when I'm not painting, there's always a piece of kitchen roll or something to hand. Now, I originally had this here. So I could use it as a pin, but I'm not convinced I'm going to need it. What I am going to do is switch to a larger tube of super glue. And then we're going to get all this out of the way. golden rule of this series with the modeling, learn from my mistakes. Okay, so that's him. Uh, I'm thinking that's going to be my front edge. So it's, it's actually going that way. But if I just do him flat on that sort of shape of the rock, then it's a bit dull. So I'll go with that. And I'm going to want to put him right in the middle. Now if I do that he's actually leaning slightly that way so I need to bring him back a bit and I'll do that by carefully shaving off a few bits in that direction. Again, he's straight that way, but I think he's leaning back. He is so I need to take a little more up in this direction. better. As this is such a light model, I don't think I'm going to need the pin either. I think I can just stick him on. He's still leaning slightly. Let's see how that goes. From that side. We're about there. So, bigger pot of super glue. 50 mil as opposed to three. Yeah. I'm just going to squirt this stuff into all the joins and the gaps around the edge. So that when it goes off, all these different layers of cork will turn into one 
single piece of epoxy resin with cork reinforcement. I'm going to paint it with um, some sort of textured, stone textured paint anyway. So it's not the end of the world if it goes a bit smooth in places, but I don't think it will anyway. I think most of it will soak into the cork. And stick down quite nicely. A few scatterings of, of sand in places then uh, yeah, we'll be well away. Obviously I can't use polystyrene cement to stick him now because it's cork, it's not polystyrene uh, that we're sticking him to. Let's just hold him roughly in place while that goes off a bit. And I'm going to cheat. Super glue activator. Just get him in the right place. Quick blast of that. And that should harden off in a few seconds. Just so you know, this stuff stinks. Shouldn't use it inside. Around doesn't affect plastic at all, so there's no qualms with that. You can see it's wet there, but if you watch in a few seconds, that will just, just evaporates off. And we have the king, the kingsman, mounted on his fake stone, which has already sat. And he's got a bit more height, a bit more presence, and he's nice and rigid. So I don't need my pin vise and my little pin, which is what they were for. It doesn't need it. Now that it's hardened off, let's see how the texture on this. It's still quite lumpy in places, which is perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. Yeah. There he is, stood on his little platform, just raising himself above the masses so he can address the peasantry before getting angry and uh, going to war like all good uh, Membari. It's not Membari, was it? What was the race of the boneheads. Babylon 5. It is the Mimbari, yeah. I'm sure it's the Mimbari. Anyway, you know what I mean. Or you don't. Either way, that's him done. So this time I genuinely am leaving. Thanks for watching. Another technique you can add to your bow there. Let's say you, you can do that with thin layers of stuff which gives you the eye, the benefit that you can adjust contours as you want or you can do it with a piece that's that thick in the start with and chip away at it so however you prefer to work um, I actually prefer to work the other way but that works just as well yeah he's nice and secure I'm quite happy with that Super glue adhesive. I'd say this one's from Evo Stick. It's called Mitre adhesive because this stuff is actually used for uh, on building sites for abutting um, plastics together, for, like roofing plastics and things. That's where I got that from. And there's my super glue. There's my baby super glue. There's the knife. Safety first. At the end of the video. Thanks for watching. As I said about. 10-15 minutes ago. Give me a thumbs up button on this video if it was useful. 
and don't forget to subscribe to the channel by poking on that guy down there. And I'll see you in the next video, which we'll probably find out if this guy's going to kill us or if we can all be friends. Why can't we be friends? Is it... uh, 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 yeah, on love and all that. No, not going to work. Oh dear. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Bye bye.